welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel, brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I will show you how to do part five of the My First Sock with Marley Bird. By this point, your sock has the cuff completed, the leg, the heel flap, the heel turn, and the gusset. Congratulations, you are more than halfway through your sock. Pretty exciting, isn't it? This lesson is gonna be all about the foot of the sock. So this is the rest of the sock all the way up to the toe. If you wanna follow along with me, please go ahead and get the pattern. The link is provided in the video description box right down there below. And while you're down there, smash that like button as my kids say. Once you have your pattern and your homework in hand, join me over here and I'm gonna walk you through the foot of the sock. Okay, so I'm totally curious how many of you actually tried on your sock once you finished the gusset? Did you get really excited? Were you like, oh my gosh, I'm actually creating something that's going to fit? It's pretty exciting, isn't it? I, I know that it was a rush the first time I ever did that. Well, as I mentioned, you are past the halfway point and now we get to do a really easy portion of the sock. Our sock recipe is all in stockinette stitch, right? For the body of the sock. And that's what we're gonna continue for the foot. As you take a look down here, you can see our example sock we've been looking at all along. And the part we're going to focus on today is everything that happens right after the gusset and right before the toe. So this section right here is what we're going to focus on. This section is the body of your sock and it's one that is highly customizable. This portion of the sock is where you can either do extra rows to get more length or do fewer rows to have it a little bit shorter. If you are like me and have a size 10, 11, 12 foot for a woman's, yours is gonna be a lot larger, a lot longer than somebody who has a size five, six, or seven. This is one of those things where I have given you estimated or approximate lengths of what your sock should be in the pattern, but you have a chance to really customize this portion, okay? So first things first, let's see exactly what you have to do, and then we'll talk about how you can customize it. I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way and pull in one of my socks. This sock sample I've been working on, along with you guys, it has my gusset already complete, and I'm ready to start the foot of my sock. Now, it doesn't matter if I ended after a decrease row or after a knit row, because the next portion of my sock is all in stockinette. So I will just jump into stockinette, okay? So I will go ahead and pick up my work, and just like we did when we were working the leg of the sock, we are literally just going to knit in the round. And our biggest thing here is we wanna make sure that we are pulling those first two stitches on each needle nice and snug, just like we've been doing all along. So at this point, you know exactly what to do, right? As you're working around, once again, if you have kept your sock in the basic sock recipe that I've been giving you, the pattern, then you are just working in plain stockinette as you're going to the top of the foot and then the bottom of the foot, okay? You're just gonna knit, 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 knit until your sock reaches the length you want it to be, okay? You don't really have to pay too much attention to how many rows you're doing unless you absolutely wanna make sure that both socks have exactly the same number of rows. But I'm here to tell you, if one sock has a couple more rows than another sock, it's really not gonna make that much of a difference. If somebody ever points that out to you, you should kick them because they are obviously way too close to your feet. <laughs> So this is all you'll do, you guys. You're just going to work in stockinette and continue working around and around and around until you reach the measurement you want. Now, you could absolutely use the approximate or the suggested measurements that I've provided in the pattern, or you could do a couple other things. Let me finish this needle right here and set this aside. So I'm gonna put this one aside because you know how to knit. You already have this down, right? But. As you're working on your sock, what we want to measure here is from the bottom of our heel, so the back of our heel, all the way up to where we're gonna start our toe. This measurement can be made simply by measuring your foot. How long is your foot 
up to where your big toe starts. You could absolutely do that and be like, all right, that's how far I need to make sure I knit on my sock. Okay, does that make sense? The other thing you could do is try on your sock. As you go along, try on your sock and as soon as your foot length reaches right before the toes hit, that could be as long as you want your sock, okay? Another way to really make sure that you get socks that fit is to take a sock that you really love and measure it against the sock that you're working on. So let's say this blue one is one that I really love and I'm making this new one here. I could just match it up and be like, okay, well, I have my foot length up to here and it hits right as my toes are starting there. I think that's about long enough. That really takes out all the guesswork because you're really taking a sock from your sock drawer that already fits and you're making a replica just by knitting a new sock, right? So that's really easy. It's also super convenient and easy to be able to snag or steal somebody else's favorite sock if you wanna make a surprise sock for them and measure against socks that you know they love. And uh, you can then still make a sock as a surprise, right? Another thing that I wanna point out is what if you decided to change it up and really make this sock your own? Well, on this sock, you remember that I decided that I was gonna do ribbing all the way down the foot or the, the leg of my sock. And then as I made my gusset, I decided to continue that ribbing along the top of my foot. As you're working the actual foot of the sock, you want to go ahead and continue down your pattern, okay? You wanna make sure you continue that down. You won't continue the pattern when you get down here to the toe of the sock. That's when you start to work in stockinette. I do wanna caution you that you wanna be very careful about the patterning that you do on the top of your sock because you wanna make sure that it will fit um, comfortably in your shoe. You don't wanna use a whole bunch of maybe cables or twisted stitches and stuff and then you're gonna put your sock or your foot in a really tight shoe because that's really gonna like really restrict and not feel so good on your foot. That is not me telling you that you can't do cables on socks. I'm just telling you, be aware, be cautious, be cognizant, and uh, know what you're making your socks for before you do all of that really beautiful work and then you're just gonna hide them in a shoe, okay? That's one of those things I want you to be careful of. Another thing I want to point out is don't be afraid to make your sock for somebody who has really giant feet. So you've seen this sock because I showed it to you when I was showing you the alternative heel right here, right? Because this isn't the eye of partridge. This is where I lined up all of my slip stitches. And I don't know if any of you noticed, but this is a really big sock. Have you seen that? This is actually the men's size sock, and it's for my husband, who has Flintstone feet. Oh my gosh. He wears a size 14 shoe, which is why the foot of his sock is so much longer than the other socks. Let's switch these up so you can see here. This is my sock. The blue is mine. The my tie is his, and let's partner them up. You can see here, it's significantly longer, it's wider all the way around. And that's because, as I said, he has Flintstone feet. He has really big feet, big calves, big everything. And he was like, you know what? I don't want a sock that's really restrictive. I want it to be really nice and comfortable. So that's why I did the men's size for him. Having said that, there are men who wear shoe sizes as big as mine. And you don't have to do the men's size for them because that's just an arbitrary term. You just wanna make a sock that fits. So you could absolutely use the measurements that we use for the woman's and it'll fit a men's size nine, a men's size 10, cause that's what I wear, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you can absolutely do that. My point of showing you all of this is by using this basic sock recipe, this basic sock pattern, you are learning how to do the basic construction of a top down heel flap sock. From there, you have a decision whether you want to have vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, pralines and cream, whatever you want, you can change up your sock, okay? You can change up the pattern just on the leg. You could do the leg and the foot. You could change the way you do the gusset. Remember, we had traditional or alternative. You could change the way you do the heel flap. All of these are options for you. So the biggest, biggest thing I want you to take away from this whole series of videos is that 
you have learned how to make a sock and you've learned the basic construction of a sock. And from here, you have so many choices that are available to you as long as you use basic construction. The ultimate goal here is you just want a sock that fits, right? You don't want to make, you want to make sure that it's not too long, not too short. And so just kind of, you know, try it on, measure it against other things or go with the estimated measurements. Totally up to you, you decide. But the cool thing is, by the time you finish this portion of the sock, we are so close to being done. You're just gonna, you're like, I taste it. Um, I mean, in theory, you could, <laughs> you could add some ribbing and right before you get to the toe and you have yoga socks. I mean, you could technically have a finished sock. Um, but hopefully you won't do that. Hopefully you'll learn the toe with me and learn how to do the Kitchener stitch and have some fun doing it. Um, but I, I am, I'm having a ball doing this knit along with you guys. Uh, can I just tell you, watching all of you succeed through the gusset has been really exciting for me. And, um, your sense of accomplishment is is just invigorating. And so thank you so much for sharing those images with me and tagging me on social media with Marley Bird because um, I'm able to find your knit along images and it's exciting and I love smashing your like button. I think it's just so much fun watching your success and I hope that this portion will be like a breeze it's going to be a breeze for you. And if you haven't had a chance to start the second sock, it's not too late. Go ahead and start it now. If you find that you have extra time, do it. Um, if you did start your second sock, get them both ready to go. And then by the end of next week's video, you will have an entire pair of socks completed. Um, cause next week video is a lot of fun and it's going to go so fast. So make sure you're ready. All right, so that's all I have to say for this week's video. Uh, this was part five of the My First Sock Knit Along with Marley Bird. And I don't care what type of sock you are making, I just hope that you are loving the process, loving the finished item, and having fun watching these videos and participating along. I know that I'm having a great time with all of you. So thank you so much. Thank you to Red Heart Yarns for supporting this, and thank you for uh, checking out the Chic Sheep Yarn. I'll see you next week for part six of this knit along, which is the final part, and uh, we are gonna have a pair of socks, you guys. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. Talk to you soon. Bye. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.